And very good evening to you. I'm Lisa Broom. This is the CBC Evening News. Barbados' security forces have launched an investigation into the incident involving a gun at a funeral. Both the police and the Barbados Defence Force are looking into what occurred as late leading seaman Adriana Sobers was being laid to rest on Monday. Yesterday, we showed you this. Today, the police are telling us that they've assigned a senior officer to investigate. Public Relations Officer Acting Assistant Superintendent David Welch tells CBC police have already carefully reviewed the footage. CBC also spoke to the senior leadership at the Barbados Defence Force and we were told that the BDF is conducting its own internal investigation into the matter. Now, Acting ASP Welch is encouraging the public to continue reporting suspicious activity to the police. He says people sometimes ignore what they see because it's not directly affecting them. But the acting ASP warns that they themselves could be the victims of crime. And while he acknowledges that some people may be afraid of possible repercussions, ASP Welch wants people to continue using Crime Stoppers that allows for anonymous reporting. He says in order to make Barbados a safer place, people need to report crimes, providing the information that allows lawmen to act. The 19-year-old who has been charged in relation to last week's fatal shooting in St. Joseph has been remanded to prison. Romario O'Neill Boxill of No Fixed Place of Abode appeared in the Hotel Magistrates Court today on murder and other charges. He's accused of fatally shooting David Ricardo Miller at Vaughn's Land No. 1 St. Joseph on April 13th. Boxill has also been charged with illegal use of a firearm. He is to reappear at the District F Magistrates Court on May 22nd. Now, according to police, Boxill is one of three men who was held in a vehicle after a high-speed chase with lawmen last Monday. The other two men, who are persons of interest, are still hospitalized at the QEH. Both are in serious but stable condition. Wanted man Shiamar Callender has been remanded to prison after appearing in court on charges of discharging a firearm in public and robbery. Police Public Relations Officer, Acting Assistant Superintendent David Welch, says Callender of Fitz Village St. James turned himself in on Monday. The 29-year-old will reappear in court on May 21st. Calendar's co-accused, 23-year-old James Jonah Josiah Sandiford of Mears Land, Richmond, St. Michael, is currently on remand. In other news now, the ruling Democratic Labour Party is celebrating its 60th anniversary and celebrations will kick off with a church service at St. Paul's Anglican Church on April 26th. This information from the party's General Secretary, George Pilgrim, at a news conference at its George Street Belleville headquarters. The theme for the DLP's celebrations is Celebrate 60, It's All About Members. The General Secretary says 60 outstanding members, two from each constituency, will receive awards at seven different events. We're celebrating members who have tall in excess of over 40 years. These are the ones to be celebrated. Collectively, these 60 persons represent over 2,400 years of party service and loyalty. Now that's a real reason to say a thank you to the membership. 60 awards will be given out over the upcoming months to these deserving persons. To start the week of activities, our party leader and prime minister, the Right Honourable Fundel Short, will host a church service at St. Paul's Anglican Church at 8 a.m. on Sunday the 26th of April. Mr. Pilgrim says at the church service, 10 awards to constituencies will be made. These are St. Michael East, St. Michael South, St. Michael South Central, the City, and St. Michael Southeast. He also says there will be a reception on April 27th, the birthday of the party, where the political leader and Prime Minister Frendel Stewart will address associate bodies of the party. I want to say thank you to all Barbadians who have supported this party over the last six years. While we're in opposition, while we're in government, those times collectively made it possible for us to reach 60 years. And I'm overwhelmed by the fact that I can sit here today as General Secretary and say thank you to Barbados. On the evening of the 27th, the party, will speak, the party leader will speak live to his members. 
history be created when he speaks life to the Canadian branch, the New York branch, and the UK branch. So in other words, all of the associate bodies of the Democratic Labour Party will be having a similar event at the same time as the party leader addresses the party. Well, due to some technical difficulties, we were unable to run our interactive question and answer segment tonight. We do apologize, but we hope that you will stay with us because we have more news after the break. I've made a fascinating discovery. The institutional water cooler. Its gravitational pull sucks people from their workstations at the busiest times of day to stand around it and chat about emerging global trends like, will pink be in fashion next season? <laughs> Meanwhile, the world slows to a stop as it waits in line to be served. I don't see that trend at Globe Finance. Globe Finance. Think outside the bank. When it comes to their financial service, slow is out, swift is in. When it feels right, you will feel like there's no place in the world that doesn't matter. Jimmy Cliff, Ferris Hammond flows right up from it. Thick extras gonna make you wine. Chronic will blow your mind. Timberline, let's go. Joey De Francesco. You don't need to waste more time. You can buy tickets online. St. Lucia Jazz and Arts Festival, April 30th to May 10th. Visit stluciajazz.org for more Saint information. Lucia Jazz and Arts Festival. Sunday on the People's Business. We take a look at the water and sanitation systems upgrade being carried out by the Barbados Water Authority. Dr. The Honorable David Eswick, Minister of Agriculture, Food, Fisheries and Water Resource Management will be our guest this week. You can be a part of the discussion. Just send your emails to talk at cbc.bb. The subcommittee of the Social Partnership and the Barbados Light and Power Company Limited are to meet tomorrow to discuss proposed layoffs. The Barbados Workers Union, which has not yet had a meeting with the BL and P, says a response to the pending matter depends on the outcome of that meeting. This was confirmed by BWU General Secretary Tony Moore. Those are discussions that must be held at the level of the subcommittee of the social partners in the first instance and then with the union as the workers' representatives. So when that discussion takes place on Friday, we should be in a better position to indicate to you, to the public at large, on the status of those discussions and when or if the union then will be meeting with the company to continue talks. The head of the medical intensive care unit at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital is asking people to talk with their families about their wishes in case of emergency. Dr. Anne-Marie Hassel says very often doctors are forced to make important decisions about patients without any idea of what they would have wanted. Dr. Hassel was speaking during a panel discussion on life and death issues, medical futility at the St. Leonard's Church. She says the decision on when care becomes futile varies from patient to patient, but it should be done in consultation with the patient's loved ones. It's important for people to actually start talking to their family members and tell them what do they want. Should I get in a car accident tomorrow? And you know my brain, I bled into my brain or something of that nature, what would I want then? Would I want to be kept alive at all costs, even if I'm in a vegetative state afterwards? Or would I say, well, do everything for me, but if I get in a vegetative st state, hold off, don't do that. Or some people say, well, whatever happens, don't put me on dialysis or whatever. But if you need to tell people so that people can respect your wishes, Government advisor on social policy Hamilton Lashley believes banning the importation of junk food can help to reduce the high levels of non-communicable diseases here in Barbados. Mr. Lashley says it's one of those areas that needs to be examined. 
They have to take pertinent and serious decision about the non-importation of junk food and stop talking and being hypocritical on why importing and then telling people to control to control what they eat when they are actually importing importing what they call um, uh, death foods. Mr. Lashley was speaking during the media launch of a children's community health club at Baobab Towers. The club is to teach children how to practice healthy lifestyles. Global health consultant of a gentle touch health and education service, Beverly John, says resources are necessary to keep the project running. We need funding for this project. It's not going to be cheap, and we're not asking everyone to give us money. Money, as I know for a fact, does not always make the world go wrong. Um, I can tell from experience that if we were able to conduct the camp with the little that we had, and I'm not saying I don't, we don't want money for the camp this year. We do need funds. But if those um, business houses, um, those, um, the private sector, as well, as well as the government, can give um, materials that would be needed, because sometimes when you approach these places to ask for sponsorship, they always think that you want to have money from them. And I'm the sort of person that believes that I don't need to have your money if you give me the material. Still to come, a look at some of the stories making headlines across the region. And remember, you can follow us on Twitter at CBC underscore newsroom and on our Facebook page, CBC News Barbados.